All right, y'all. So you watched me do the unboxing of this last time, and today we're here to do a full demo of the GOC Illumina MTLX, uh, specifically this one in gold. Y'all know if you watched my last video that I am just absolutely enamored with this color. It looks ridiculous, and I still haven't gotten enough of it. But before we dive in, let's go ahead and take a listen to this in the context of a full demo song. <laughs> As y'all just heard, this seven string guitar definitely does the thing. I mean, these new pickups from GOC, these are the Paragon 2.0s. These are hand wound for GOC and they sound amazing. All right, so now that we're back here in Logic, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what we're working with as far as the signal chain goes. Uh, obviously we're using the GOC guitars Illumina MTLX. It is tuned to drop A, so A, E, A, D, G, B, E. Now it's just going straight into my Audient ID14 Mark II interface, a very basic interface, but it sounds fantastic and the instrument input on it is great. It has a very low noise floor. I don't have to crank any extra gain uh, in or out of it, which is really convenient. Uh, for this first tone, which is the distorted tone, I'm going straight into the new Fortin Nameless X. And so you'll see some pretty generic settings here. As far as the pedals go, this is where a lot of the work is being done. I do have the Zool noise gate turned on as well as the normal gate. I really do like that combination of the two. It keeps things silent without choking the notes, which is fantastic. Then we have the hex drive going with some pretty basic uh, overdrive settings. And then we do have the grind going. I know not everybody uses both of these pedals at once, but I really ended up liking how those all sounded together. Uh, as far as the EQ section, I have nothing going on because I do have some global EQ going on that I'll show you in a second and I don't have any other effects going. What I do have going are some different impulse responses. So I didn't really vibe with the impulse responses that were built into the Nameless X plugin. So what I've got going on are the primary cabs, heartless audio impulse responses that are available on my website right now, link down below, shameless plug. Uh, but specifically, I have the Fender and the Mesa, and then these are mixed slightly in favor of the Mesa. I guess by slightly, I, I should say they're mixed very much in favor of the Mesa. And then as far as EQ goes in here, I really just have a high and low pass filter going inside of here as well. If I pop open Pro Q3 though, you'll see that I do have some stuff going on. This is because this is the tone that I actually used in the mix for the demo song that you just heard for both the left and right rhythm guitars here. And so I do have a dynamic filter going at what, 116 Hertz, and this is to squash the low end of the palm mutes. And then I do have some pretty steep cuts at what, 4,049 hertz, and then another one at 3,080. I have a bump at 1,590, and then I do have a high shelf at 5,400. And so this is what that sounds like. <laughs> All right, so that's all the bridge pickup. The neck pickup would sound like this. So the neck pickup sounds pretty sick on these as well. Very smooth and it doesn't drop in volume or anything. It sounds great. But yeah, so that's just a simple heavy rhythm tone. It sounds fantastic. You still hear the chord separation, everything from these pickups, which is great. So if we go and play. With all those open strings and the notes that you hear on the top end. So just listen if you can pick out these but while I'm strumming all of the strings. So one of the first tests that I do with pickups to see if I can actually hear that note separation between the strings when I'm doing chords like that. Same thing with like this one up here.
<laughs> and the reason I do that is not every pickup can do that. There's some pickups that are very muddy and that will kind of drown out those higher notes when you're playing the bass strings as well, because the bass strings do have a lot more tonal information that's going on and they can really mask and hide those other notes. So if you like music where you can hear the chords kind of ringing out like that, always check that, just play a simple chord like and do it with the open strings because there's the most resonance happening there because you're not actually holding anything down except for those two high notes or you could even do down here or since we're on a seven string uh, we could even do like a, an open g essentially And that's what I really look for in a good pair of pickups, honestly. I need them to sound like that. So let's go ahead and move over to a clean tone here. I'm gonna use Archetype Gojira for this, and I know not everybody thinks that that plugin is made for its clean tones, but it does have great clean tones for the style of music that I write. So obviously I'm on the clean head here, and I'm not using the cab section at all. I am again using the Primary Cab's Heartless Audio, but this time I'm using a mixture of the Fender and the Orange Cabinets. And you can see it's leaning very much towards the orange cabinet here. It's a lot darker because I have the bright switch turned on on the head here itself. Um, I have gain cranked pretty far down because these pickups are hot. I don't need much coming out of the amp for volume wise. Uh, bass is left at mid, mid is left at mid. I did crank the treble a little bit. Output is pulled down there, but it's obviously bumped a little bit up here. Uh, I guess I could turn off the gate. I don't know why I had that on, probably just from the previous setting. Uh, nothing on the pedal section here or here and nothing in EQ as well. If we go over to the pedal section though, we do have the delay and the reverb on. The mix is set really low on the delay. I just wanted a little bit of that slap back from it. I didn't want a ton going on there, not for this purpose at least. And then I do have the reverb set to about mid as far as the mix goes. So let's go ahead and take a listen to what that sounds like. <laughs> That was all on the bridge pickup. Let's go ahead and go to the middle pickup now. And then the neck pickup. So as you can hear, these new Paragon 2.0 pickups from GOC Guitars sound fantastic. They sound great clean, they obviously sound great distorted and under high gain tones as well, uh, but they really can do a lot more than that. I do have some more videos coming soon that'll showcase a couple of different genres with these pickups, but I honestly think they sound really great as it is, no matter what your style is. These GOC Guitars can do it. I know that you guys see me primarily playing metal, but you're about to see a lot more than just metal coming from me very soon. I have one other GOC guitar with these same pickups in it, and it sounds phenomenal as well. So they've recreated some magic inside of these things. And it does everything from high output to low output. I, I just can't get enough of these pickups. This is the first time I've bought a guitar in a long time that I haven't felt the need to swap the pickups. And that's saying a lot for me, you know? So as far as specs go for this guitar, this is a Northern American Ash body. This makes it extremely light, extremely resonant too, oddly enough. And it shows the wood grain really, really well, especially with this gold. Uh, but it came out really nice. The finish came out insane. The neck is micarta. Now this is a material that GOC has been using for a while on their necks. The neck you'll notice is an ergonomic profile. So it's hard to explain over a camera. You'll know as soon as you pick one up and feel it, but it's got a flat, almost hexagonal uh, edge to it right here where your thumb would usually rest on the top of the neck on the, on the base side. On the treble side though, it's like a thin C or even a thin D almost. It really cradles your hand well, especially on a seven string guitar like this or an eight string for that matter. It makes it extremely comfortable to play while keeping the neck flat and playable. That's something I really, really enjoy about the necks on GOC guitars. Now, as far as the dimensions go, this is a seven string. So this is one of the 26 to 27 inch scale lengths, multi-scale. Makes it really nice to play in drop A like you've heard it in today, but I've also tuned it down to drop G and even a drop F sharp and it's held tuning very well. One of the perks of having a multi-scale is that you can drop tune to any of these tunings that you want to without having to go for gigantic strings on it. Something I definitely appreciate about multi-scale guitars that I really didn't know about beforehand. So glad to have it on this guitar now, to be honest with you. These do have two-way adjustable truss rods as well as carbon fiber reinforcement. These necks are extremely stable. I have had no problems with these staying in tune and not having to adjust them both while hanging and sitting on guitar stands and being put into cases and things like that. So tuning stability has been a dream on here, to be honest with you. The bridge is something that people talk about with GOC guitars pretty often. So there's a lot of headless guitars out there. A lot of them don't stay in tune well, especially if these tuners start to hit on your leg when you're playing, especially in the, uh, 
I guess this is classical stance here. So when you're sitting like this, a lot of other headless guitar bridges could actually hit on your leg and start turning those tuners, making your guitar go in and out of tune. That's a really big hassle when you're recording, for instance, which is what I do primarily is I sit in this chair and record music 99% of the time. So I really appreciate that these are a little bit more stiff and it keeps them in tune. So I do use a guitar pick to turn these. I get asked that a lot. Hey, how do you turn your tuners? Well, I'm a guitarist. I almost always have a guitar pick in my hand and I just put a guitar pick right into the slots here and I turn them. And what's nice about this bridge system is that it doesn't really go out of tune very often. So once I'm locked in, I'm locked in. It's very similar in my opinion to something like a Floyd Rose or any other locking tuning system without actually being locking just because these are a little bit more stiff and they don't turn as easily. Whereas I do have a Strandberg Bowden, for instance, and I have knocked that out of tune a few times just from the tuners being hit on my leg. The headpiece where the strings attach up at the top is nice because it does have a dual lock system. So it has two screws for each string that keeps these locked down and makes it to where you don't accidentally lose a string because you trimmed it too soon and one of the screws was loose or something like that. These actually keep it locked in really well. This has been through three string changes already and I've had no issues with that. And it keeps the string ends out of the way of your hands when you're up here. That also seems like a small thing, but it is nice to have a very comfortable headpiece on a headless guitar because I've played some that are very jagged up at the top and makes it really tough to play those caveman riffs, you know? Now, when we look at the other ergonomics of this guitar, you'll notice that we do have a bevel right here where your arm would rest while you're playing, whether you're standing or sitting down that's a really great aspect for comfort as well as the belly cut on the back so this belly cut allows you to sit with the guitar not only in classical stance but also in the stance that most other players play in and have it leaning up against your body a little bit more for when you're playing leads or when you're trying to lean into the guitar a little bit more it's not just flat and straight up here like a telecaster or other similar guitars would be so again all of these things including the ao neck and the ergo profile here add up to a really comfortable guitar to play especially considering it being a seven string extended scale multi-range guitar the last thing i'll note aesthetics wise is on the side you'll have these gigantic lumen lay side dots and the reason that they made these larger is so that they can actually glow a lot brighter when you need them to. When you have lumen lay side dots and they're the tiny little pinprick side dots, those can only stay illuminated for so long because there's not enough of that glow material to charge up with like UV light or sunlight or whatever you charge it with and keep it lit for maybe a whole 45 minute concert, for instance. So these will be a lot more likely to last you for an entire show than the smaller lumen lay side dots that you'll find out there. It's a really convenient feature of the guitar. And I know I said lastly, but there are two more things I wanna point out here that make this guitar extremely comfortable for me as a player. One, the placement of the input jack. So it's right here in this cutout curve. To some that might seem like it's a, uh, a bad place to have it because it's gonna sit on your leg. I do use angled cables though, and the angled cable just sits right inside of there and lets it rest up against my leg, so there's no way that that's coming out. And the same would go if I was standing, because if I had a strap on the guitar right now, I, the cable would come out and then wrap up behind the strap, because that's how most people play, is they wrap their guitar cable through the strap so that it keeps it planted. So it's a really cool safety feature for if you step on your cable while you're standing up with your guitar. And then back here, you'll notice that there is a battery clip. A lot of people ask, why is there a battery clip on GOC guitars if they're not active pickups? Well, one, they don't really need active pickups in my opinion. The Paragon 2.0s sound fantastic. They're high output, they're extremely clear, and they're hand-wound for GOC. You don't see that in a lot of production guitars, so that's something that's really cool, that they have a, a custom shop aspect to these guitars that you can buy. No, what this is here for is if you do decide to mod it with active pickups. If you were to throw any seven string style pickups in here that were active like Seymour Duncan or Fishman or EMG, you'd be immediately able to solder into this battery clip because the wiring's already there and you wouldn't have to worry about like duct taping your battery with some foam inside of the cavity like we all did back in the day, right? So that leaves your cavity here with all your electronics clean, clear, and under control. All right, so now that you've heard this in a full demo mix and you've heard all of the soloed tones, I wanted to give you my opinion on the guitar because yes, I'm a GOC guitars artist, but I did pay for this guitar. This one is mine. I did not get this one for free. I am making this content because I wanted to be able to answer a lot of people's questions all at once because I get a ton of DMs and a ton of comments on all of my uh, videos about these guitars asking all of these questions I'm trying to cover here today. So what are my thoughts here? I've owned a lot of seven string guitars. I have a seven string Kiesel hanging up behind me right there. I've had seven string ESPs seven string Strandbergs. There's a lot of sevens out there. I think sevens are my preferred guitar at this point. And there's a lot of things that I love about the GOC guitars. One, I have small hands. These necks are extremely comfortable to play. That's something I've really appreciated about every GOC that I've picked up, including the eight string that you all see from me very soon, is that the necks are not too big. I can get my hand around it and play chords that I normally wouldn't be able to on, say, an Ibanez seven string, or even my Kiesel. My Kiesel 27 inch Aries, I do struggle on that neck just because it's a little bit too wide. And because of the shape of it, I can't get my hand perfectly around it. So there are some chord shapes that are actually very almost painful for me to play. 
And that's something that doesn't happen to me with this. And again, when you think about headless guitars, there's a lot of ergonomic aspects to having one, right? They're lighter, they usually have thinner profiles, they usually have better belly cuts and things of that sort. For me, another great aspect of it is being able to travel with it. When I go on vacation or anything, I'm not gonna pop a Kiesel into a case and put that in my car. I live in the Bay Area, that's probably not the smartest thing for me to do, right? But with the GOC, I can fly with this, I can stash it in my trunk, I can keep this pretty much anywhere, so having these smaller profiles are great. And I know it's kinda hard to tell, but this studio room that I'm recording everything in is quite small, so if I were to turn in this chair with one of my longer extended range guitars or basses, I would actually knock over the lights that are illuminating me right now, for instance, or the tripod that's in front of me capturing audio. So it's nice having a headless guitar because I can actually move around like a normal person. And I know that doesn't sound like an important point for a lot of people, but if you look around on the internet these days at what most people are doing with their guitars, they're sitting at their desk or they're sitting on their bed, they're sitting on their couch and they're recording and writing music, right? We're in a great time to be a guitar player. There's so much technology available to us for really cheap at this point. Hell, this guitar was only $800 if I recall. So these aren't very expensive guitars for how much you get out of them and how great they sound. And I'm not joking about sitting on the couch and writing music. My fiance and I sit on the couch almost every night and she does her creative work, I do my creative work. And this means I don't hit her in the face with my guitar anymore. I kid you not, I used to actually turn and almost swing a guitar into her face all the time because headstocks go a little bit further. And again, that might be like a really small amount of people that have that same kind of issue, but hey, if you're one of those people out there who've ever hit your loved one in the face with a guitar on accident, maybe a headless guitar is for you. So I hope this video has answered all of your questions. If you all wanna see or hear this guitar in the context of any other styles of music, please go ahead and leave that in the comments. I'd be more than happy to do some more work with this. You're gonna see and hear a lot more from me with this guitar. Obviously, I can't get over how damn good this thing looks, and I hope that you guys feel the same. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps me out, and I'll see you all in the next one.